Thanks, Wendy. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to this webinar because I, I think it's an important topic. I've talked about it at some conferences, and I've gone through this for for you know maybe a year, a year and a half. Uh, and I want to first start with this notion of prescriptiveness. Um, it's it's a real it's a real key. But before we even do that, I want to talk about uh, coaching and have a broad definition of it. Uh, so when I say coach in this sense for this for this webinar, for this workshop, I'm implying that you could be in one of these roles. You could be a scrum master. Uh, you could be an agile coach, a formal coach. You could be a manager or a team leader who's coaching in an agile context. You could be a senior leader. Uh, you could even be a project manager. Um, I, from my point of view, uh, I'm focusing on virtually anyone who's guiding, who's in a role where they're helping to guide uh, an agile transformation, an agile adoption effort and you're providing a counsel to people, you're providing guidance to people, uh, you're partnering with them along this journey because Agile is such a, a change to most folks. It's, it's a significant change, and it's a challenge uh, to navigate it from, from whatever methodology an organization has been using to Agile uh, that I think coaching is incredibly important. Uh, and it's not just for the coaches. It's so leaders can have a coaching stance, if you will. Not only can, but probably should have a coaching stance. Uh, so that's a little bit of the the, the definition context. Um, uh, let's talk about prescriptive. Uh, it's making or giving directions, uh, rules or injunctions. Uh, it's sanctioned by longstanding usage or custom. Uh, and, and it can be derived from legal prescription, meaning we have a prescriptive title. Um, the, the, what I'm trying to get at in this talk is to look at uh, too soft and then too prescriptive. And, and in the talk, we're trying to get to just right. So somewhere in the middle, uh, and we'll explore it in a little bit more detail. So one side, let's look at that what what does too prescriptive look like? This is the drill sergeant. The picture there denotes a drill sergeant. And I fortunately was had the opportunity to experience drill sergeants when I was in the army, uh, and I went through boot camp. And uh, I I seem I think I might be scarred by this gentleman. Uh, I think I remember him, uh, and he would get in my face. So. Um, and, and again, none of you, this is, you know, I'm not accusing anyone who's listening of being <laughs> too prescriptive. I'm just explaining the continuum for that we're going to use for discussion purposes. So it's excessively telling. Uh, really, it's somewhat closed-minded. It's, it's my way. There's one way to do things. It's sort of my way or the highway. Uh, it's, it's very tactically, often prescriptiveness is very tactically focused and not strategic. Uh, maybe disaster prevention. Uh, it requires micromanagement, if you've ever heard that term or experienced micromanagement. Lots of scrutiny uh, would be part of it. Your your actions are scrutinized. Uh, you're getting uh, fast feedback and continuous feedback. So one side of the coaching continuum is is being too prescriptive uh, and or being prescriptive, but you can, you can exaggerate it. Uh, the next side of the coaching continuum is it can be too soft. Uh, I remember years ago I was I was attending a project management conference, and and there was a a man uh, t teaching a session, and he was talking about I think the title of his topic was the number one problem for project managers is that they're too soft, and he was trying to uh, talk about techniques to bring more backbone to more uh, sort of courage into the project manager, more telling. Now, I don't know what project managers he was he was talking about. I mean, the ones I've experienced definitely were not too soft, but I could see where he was coming from, that that there there's a pattern where uh, project managers might not be firm enough. And I could see the same pattern in Agile coaches uh, where they never tell, they, so they would never tell the team what to do. Uh, there's a myriad of ways of doing things. Uh, it's they they are very comfortable with advanced teams. So advanced agile teams uh, being too soft works well because the teams have tremendous experience. But what if they're an inexperienced team? Uh, so context matters. 
uh, very often the position is let's see or discovering that's that's work together to discover where we're going rather than uh that's that's plan a course and it's fail friendly uh or learning friendly uh, again you can almost lean towards that's why i have the dalai lama there you can lead you know you can lean a little bit too strongly in that direction uh for purposes of this talk we want to we want to sort of get to uh we want to get to just right we want to explore what's the middle look like uh, because I think that's where the success is. And I've seen coaches uh, on both sides. In fact, it's a very common, at least in my experience, probably 80% of the Agile coaches that I experience uh, fall into the too soft. So if I if I run into coaches, um, probably maybe 10% of the Agile coaches or colleagues that I run into are too prescriptive or lean more heavily towards prescriptiveness. And the vast majority of coaches lean towards too soft that they they're very uncomfortable with telling teams what to do or providing you know strong advice or strong guidance uh and and that's where that's the the sweet spot for this talk is to try to convince those folks or encourage those folks to get slightly more prescriptive and see what happens it's all about the results of your coaching uh i thought i'd share this uh doc norton has uh a blog and he uh you know, I thought I'd explain like the prescriptive coach, so I'll just go through this dialogue real quickly. Uh, and this is a nice example of prescriptiveness from an agile point of, from an agile coaching point of view, or from an agile context point of view. And the coach says, "May I give you some feedback on your stand-ups?" And the client is sure that would be great. And the coach says, "I've noticed you don't address the three questions in your stand-ups. I think you'd find stand-ups to be of higher of a higher value if you did." And the client is like, oh, we tried that. It felt really disconnected. Uh, this way feels, whatever way they're using, this way feels more like a team. And then the coach responds to that, well, I don't know if you've read this book on Scrum, but the stand-up serves a very specific and important purpose. It's important in order to maximize the benefit and not waste people's time that we cover what was done, what will be done, and any impediments. Let's tell the team we're improving the format and start with the three questions on Monday. Sound good, right? And uh, that's the that's the coach not only being prescriptive in nature, uh, but but coming back to like uh, a very a very by rote approach to the daily stand up. What the client is saying in this case is we started there. We started with the the three questions: What did I do yesterday? What do I plan on doing today? Is there anything in my way? That's a very traditional, very basic, you know, way to conduct or facilitate the daily stand up in Scrum. Uh, and the client is giving them feedback, giving the coach feedback that it, it they tried it and it and they've evolved beyond it. And then the coach is coming back and basically saying, you know, stop that, that I know better than you do, and uh, I want you to do it this way. Uh, this is probably more prescriptive than I want to be on occasion. And when you do this, and we'll explore this a little bit along the session, it maybe there are occasions. Hi there, I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Malutis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over a thousand hours of on-demand career development, covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants, all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of the great IT professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.